Amen. Happy Sabbath. All right. So, um, I'm glad Kanar and Swinton went over what they went over this morning, because when one of the thoughts we have to keep in mind as we look at the Reconstruction era, um, is that Satan is always there to resist. We may not see 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 what he's doing, but he's always there to resist. And 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 that thought goes well with with what what the Lord is showing now. Um, let's actually let's go to 5T 452, paragraph one. It is not in our notes. 5T 452. Just to keep this in mind. <clears throat> 5T, page 452, paragraph one. And I'm just going to read a little bit from here. Um, in the middle of the paragraph, it says the Sunday movement. Do we see it? <clears throat> she says, the Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue. And many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is tending. So Satan is always there trying to um, resist and fight, fight against God and his people. Satan is setting snares and traps for us for, for long down in, in the future. And we have to keep in mind that Satan is always there, there to resist. She uses the word undercurrent. And she takes, takes the natural to show the spiritual. Because an undercurrent in, 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 in its natural sense is that there is a current of water that is, that is flowing underneath what what the natural eye can see and exactly yeah, the, the, amen the current that's on on top is not the same as the current underneath and many people die because of the undercurrent they, because they do not see the undercurrent and this is satan's object to keep our eyes blinded from seeing that undercurrent because god is trying to show us this undercurrent so that our feet may not be swept from under us ah amen Amen. When you fight in your own, sh yeah. say it again. You need to follow the Amen. You have to, you have to hold on to Christ, because once you try to fight in your own strength, the undercurrent will take you, and death is is the next sure thing. So we have to keep this, keep this in mind. Um, continue on. Actually, I just want to read this next next sentence. Its professions are mild, and apparently Christian. Keep that in mind. But when it shall speak, it will reveal the spirit of the dragon. So we have to realize there's an undercurrent and Satan is, is working in, on, in places in which, which we don't see. But the promise is that the Lord has a thousand ways in which we do not know. So the Lord is also working and because she tells us that Christ is constantly weaving, weaving the web of what? Human events. And another point that Swinon brought, brought up, um, <clears throat> it says... He said that we then should see things that is happening in our history. We should see events that's happening in the state power and so forth and, and, and the things that is happening in the world. And we must, you must compare them with the predictions. So we'll begin um, in our notes. And praise God, Swindon went over a good, a good amount because I don't have to go over some of these portions now because I, I do have a number of pages, but... I don't have to go over the same exact things that which one I just said. <coughs> okay. Just reading the bold from Signs of the Times, October 1st, 1894, paragraph 8. The bold portion. The Bible is, is to be our guidebook. And instead of consulting the wisdom of men and accepting as divine truth the assertions of finite mortals, we should, we should search the sure word of prophecy. God would have us study the events that are taking place around us. And compare them with the predictions of his word in order that we may understand that we are living in the last days. So Sister White puts forth this rule and she followed this rule even herself because the Lord told her this rule. So now let's go back. Let's go to 1 Tim 264 now. Paragraph 4. It says, I was pointing back to ancient Israel held in bondage by the Egyptians. Um... Okay, jump down to the last bold. They would not admit that the visitation or judgment was from God, and therefore they, they pursued after the children of Israel. Jump down to the next bold, 1T266, because now we, 
we've we've read these in the past like two months, I believe. And we know that she is comparing the history of 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 the bondage in the 400 years in bondage in Egypt to the slavery that happened in the United States. Says this scene was this scene was excuse me. This scene was what was presented before me to illustrate the selfish love of slavery and the desperate measures which the South which the South would adopt to cherish the institution and the dreadful lamps to which they will go before they would yield. Just as Pharaoh did, this is what the South did in, um, during the U.S. Civil War. Next bold. The consciences of these masters have, have become seared and hardened, as was Pharaoh's. And if compelled to release their slaves, their principles remain unchanged. So the principles of the slave masters are still in this earth to this day. Because, because the number one slave master is who? Satan. Satan, Satan is the one that, that told these men, men to go forward and do these things. So, and we see that Satan has not changed in the past 6,000 years. Right after, yeah, amen. Amen. He just turned right back. The principles remain unchanged. Amen. A double-minded man is unstable. Satan's this unstable man. Um, continue on. And they would make the slave feel their oppressive power if possible. It looked to me like an impossibility now for slavery to be done away. God alone can wrench the slave from the hand of his desperate, re relentless oppressor. All the abuse and cruelty exercised toward the slave is justly chargeable to the upholders of the slave system, whether they be southern or northern men. So look at this at a heavenly view now. So who freed the, the, the slaves from, from their bondage? Okay, yes. All right. In. Amen. I, I did it? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. I'll start that over. All right. Naturally, historically, in the Civil War. Okay, Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> and, and he was of the north or the south. The North, okay. So you have the North is the one that frees from slavery. Honest Abe. He's he. he amen. He's showing Christ. So you have Abraham, and his name is his name is Abraham. He's the he's the um and Abraham means I think father of a multitude. Amen. It's all of Israel. It's the blacks. And the South, um, the South was the Confederates, I'll say. And the slaves are the slaves, basically. But now, like I said previously, now the heavenly view, who are the one who 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 free frees the slaves? Christ. So as we said, Abraham is showing the work of Christ. The Confederates is then who? That 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 brought the slaves into bondage? Satan. That's nice that you use Confederates. Go ahead. Yes. It's the whole world. It's always a, him tricking people into his into this union. This Amen. Okay. And the slaves are just man. It's mankind. And she says, God alone can wrench the slave from the hand of his desperate, relentless oppressor. God alone can wrench the slave from the hand of his oppressor. It's basically just what this is here. So the heavenly view, north, Christ, south, Satan, the slaves are just mankind. And men get to choose between north and south. Exactly. That's what we see in black people today. Amen. Yes. The south. Amen. Amen. Join yourself with Christ. Amen. Okay, so we'll go. <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna just put some of the things in which Swinton put in place as well. It was the 400 years. Let's put 400 years, and then they came to the Passover, and it's the birth. That's the quote we have there next. And Swinton read the same same two bowls. Then you also have um, the 70. 
Then you had restoration of the temple. Okay. You had Cyrus coming. And this is 536 BC. Okay? Um, okay, I'll leave that. Oh, yes, the 1260. You have 1798. Let's put it right here. 1798. Amen. The United States rises. All right. So we keep all these, all these things in mind. All these captivities are just pointing forward. It's, it's, it's really showing us the cap captivity of our souls, basically. And we need freeing from sin. That is the, the ultimate um, goal, basically, to come out from sin. All right. So now jump down to under 1861. Amen. Yes, they and it's and it's through a union. It's always it's always just been this union. <clears throat> so, eighteen sixty one is the beginning of the Civil War. Um. Yes, I need it. Okay. Yes, it's the beginning of the Civil War. It's the battle between the North and the South, and we know Dan eleven forty is showing this battle between the North and the South, and it's and it's um and it's fulfillment of the Dan eleven forty in its spiritual sense. Sunday law. Have here is the battle between the north and the south. 1865. Sunan read this quote as well. It says 40 acres and a mule is a part of the special field orders number 15, a post civil war promise proclaimed by Union General William Sherman on January 16th, 1865, to allot family units, including freed people, a plot of land no larger than 40 acres. So, have this civil war, 1861. To, ah, uh, ain't got much space. Yeah, eight sixty one to eight sixty five. Yes, this the four years. Um, yeah, just leave it there. Okay. Actually, no, I'll put it up there. I have to. Eight sixty one. Eighteen sixty five. So now, when this time came is this reconstruction era so now we look at what britannica what how how the world views the reconstruction era it says reconstruction in u.s history the period from 1865 to 1877 so this this is this period here this reconstruction 1865 to 1877 uh i'm gonna need to erase this line but i'm gonna put the way marks right above it just for more space. So we have this prediction. Let's put pre for short. Ellipsis. 10, 10, 10, 10. Midway. Okay. So it says reconstruction in U.S. history, the period 1865 to 1877 that followed the American Civil War, during which attempts were made to redress the inequities of slavery and its political, social, and economic legacy, and to solve the problems arising from the re readmission to the Union of the 11 states that had seceded at or before the outbreak of the war. So what happened to the states after the Civil War? Ba based upon what we just read and history. They had seceded before the war, but what happened after? They united. They united. Okay. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And one of the things the Republicans want is the states to handle the coronavirus situation. But the Democrats want a national coronavirus. But that was said, said, it's also said this is the Excuse civil me. war. States' rights versus national rights. Ah, uh, yes. Amen. Same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, doesn't help. Amen. 
The principles are the same. It, it, it remains unchanged. So we have this union at, at the end of the Civil War. And so it went over World War I as well. What happened at the end of World War I? A union. We also here have the League of the Jews, so we know we are, we know the Adventist Church um, will be doing something here as well. Don't know fully at this time, but we know by principle that the Adventist Church will be drawn in as well. But <clears throat> um, continue on, going to the next bold. Reconstruction witnessed far-reaching changes in America's political life. At the national level, new laws and constitutional amendments permanently altered the federal system and the definition of American citizenship. So at the end of <clears throat> at the end of the Civil War in the Reconstruction era, it was um, constitutional amendments. Amen. So we know at this time, in Midway, even in this type, something's going to be happening. Something has to take place with the Constitution. Do not know what it is, but we know by principle it must happen. It's the same history is being repeated over and over and over again. Because it's because because at CSL, we have the same things: a constitutional amendment. At the Final Review, we have a constitutional amendment. Something is happening with the Constitution. Because 1798, what came up? The Constitution. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. who understand English law, Roman law, we can see that it is a direct, it is, it is an attack on the Constitution. Amen. It's the interpretation of the really, Constitution. Yes. The event, you have to see that whatever the event is, mm -hmm. it directly affects the Constitution. the Constitution. Amen. If it's on the Constitution, well then yes, it affects the Constitution. But if, the, if, the, if they make a law that it may seem helpful, well, God still has to see Amen. that it's an attack on the Amen. And, th and this is the thing. That's why we open up with 5T. It's, it's, um, yes, it's this undercurrent. It's professions are mild. It seems all nice, but Satan is plotting for the son in law. That, that is, that, that is, that is what, what he wants. He wants the papacy, a representative of himself, back sitting down as the head, the head of the world. This is what Satan wants. So from 14 onward, Says so I'm just working for that specific thing, for the son of law to come back, and and this is this is the this is this is a this is the big test in which every Adventist knows is the son of law crisis. But continuing on, so we can see from this reconstruction two things, and we'll look at the first one. This when the freedom of the blacks is really pointing forward to God's people being free from sin. This is what Swinney was speaking about. We're, we're now, we're now, you're free from every known sin and, and now you're standing here in this and, and you're born again. It's this birth and it's only typifying the final review when you're free from sin in, its, in, in all aspects. So we look at the word construction because if you understand construction, we can understand reconstruction. Construction means the act of building. Next bold, the form of a building. Um, the fourth one, it says interpretation, explanation, or the manner of understanding the arrangements of words or of understanding facts. So this is what God will do with his church. In his church, he will, he will um, help us to interpret his word better than how we do it now. He will explain his word better um, not, I won't say it, say it that way. He will, he will explain his word and then we will have a better understanding of his word because, because, because of certain concepts and principles are out of our mind now. And because um, Sunan put forth says, every error is sin and an error never sanctifies. So because, and, and Sister White says that, Anytime man speaks, they always weave self into it. So everything in which we're speaking, even me speaking now, in some shape or form, I'm weaving self into it 
because of just just my own evil heart until I'm freed from that self will not be woven into it in 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 the smallest um point so Christ will come here with with the with with those who pass this this test here and then he will give them an abundance of light and and he will give the principles of prophetic interpretations that is that is what what he will do at this time this is always 11 18 40 he'll give us more upon the old because I, I know we we may have some concepts wrong concepts in our minds where now the lord has to correct um come and correct these things but and we'll see this in coil 39 paragraph one just reading the bold portion. In the days of Christ, the rabbis put a forced mystical what? Interpretation then. Because construction means interpretation, explanation, or, or an understanding. So they put their own mystical interpretation upon it, upon many portions of scripture. So Christ is going to come here and rip out all those false, false things. Amen. And now, and now, and I have Israel, his son. And just as Swinon said that, this is now when the church is established here. And now, now they have all, they have correct interpretation, correct understanding, up to all the light in which the Lord has given us at that time. So, now we're going to look at 536. Look at this construction again. Daniel 10.1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. He understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Then I lifted up mine eyes and, and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Jump down to verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision. All right. Next paragraph. It's what... Can I went over this morning where you have um, Satan resisting um, the work of Christ upon Cyrus's mind. It says, by this we see that the heavenly agencies have to contend with hindrances before the purpose of God is fulfilled in its time. The king of Persia was, was controlled by the highest of all evil angels. He refused, as did Pharaoh, to obey the word of the Lord. Gabriel declared he withstood me 20 and 21 days by his representations against the jews but michael came to his help and then he, he remained with the kings of persia holding the powers in check giving right counsel against evil counsel so right here as we have we have 536 and we know 536 is when the first decree goes forth for the reconstruction of the temple go ahead Mm -hmm. This is there when, they, when they're blaming God's people for what's happening in the world. Ah, uh, yes, amen. He, he, he's telling the man in the world, man, it's Adventists. That is doing they're this. One, why should you do this? It's going to free them. They're the mm -hmm. one. And, and Christ has to come on the end and cut that off. Amen. So Christ comes here and holds these holds powers, these evil powers, the satanic powers, in check he holds this holds them in check so that god's people can go do a work that this is all what it's pointing down to and i believe we'll get into it later on because there is a work for us here establish schools and teach those in whom um whom have just came out of slavery this physical um bondage all right um okay next paragraph 11 mr 99 paragraph 3 just a bold Actually, we'll read the whole thing. It says, good and evil angels are taking, taking a part in the planning of God in his earthly kingdom. It is God's purpose to carry forward his work in correct lines, in ways that will advance his glory. But Satan is ever trying to what? Counter work God's purpose. Only by humbling themselves before God can God's servants advance his work. Never are they to depend on their own efforts or on our display for success. While Satan was striving to influence the highest powers in the kingdom of Medo-Persia to show disfavor to God's people, 
angels worked in behalf of the exiles. So we have to see at this point, Hemingway, Satan is working literally on the highest powers in the nation, upon the president, upon the Congress, upon the, upon the Supreme Court, all these things from, from the highest all the way down to the lowest. Satan is working upon, upon the hearts of men, but God has his angels working upon the hearts of men as well. <clears throat> Next, bold. For three weeks, Gabriel wrestled with the powers of darkness, seeking to counteract the influences at work on the mind of Cyrus. And before the contest closed, Christ himself came to Gabriel's aid. Next, bold. All that heaven could do in behalf of the people of God was done. The victory was finally gained. The forces of the enemy were held in check all the days of Cyrus. So, yet again, power was held in check at this time period. This is, this is a little time of peace for God's people. But in the world, we still know there will be troubles going on. So, say it again. Oh, amen. In the world, there will be tribulation. But in me, Christ says, you have peace. Okay. As for one, just reading the bold, then we jump to Isaiah 44, 28. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia. This is 536 B.C. As you know, we'll, yeah, we'll read verse 2 and 11. That saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Verse 11. All the silvers of gold, all the vessels, excuse me, of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Sheshbazar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought <clears throat> up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. So they're entering into the land and have reparations. It's all these, it's the box of jewels in which um, Miller saw, correct? It was. Yeah, the casket. Okay, yes, yes, it was Miller. All right. So Isaiah 44, verse 28. That saith Osiris, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be what? Built. It's construction. And, and to the temple, thy what? Foundation shall, shall be laid. So in 536, what was laid? Foundation. So the foundation of many generations is laid right here. Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gate shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in, cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, Call, call thee by thy name and the God of Israel. So all the secret things are given unto God's people. Because now they have come out of bondage and now they're receiving of these riches. And the riches are the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. This is the reparation. Say, say it again. Heavens are open now. The Bible is an open book to, um, to God's people here at this point. Amen. Amen. All the secret things... God, God will reveal here, and, and now they belong unto who? Unto us. So, at, at midway, it's going to be such an abundance of light. It, we, we, we have not seen it since, since we have lived upon this earth. It's going to be such an abundance of light. But, amen, come out with great substance. Amen. And this is the substance, the truth in which God wants to really show us. Because our minds, <clears throat> our minds will be taken far away from this earth onto heavenly things. And this is, and this is where the Bible says, lay, lay not, lay not your treasures on what? On this earth. So our treasures must be in heaven. That is, that is the, the great substance, the riches, the treasures, the gold, the silver, the jewels. So it's many, it's going to be a glorious manifestation of the power of God. Um, continuing on, Isaiah 45 verse 5. <clears throat> I am the Lord, and there is none else. What principle is he bringing forth here when he says, and there is none else? Where else does he say this in the Bible? What principle is he speaking about? Huh? 
Okay, yes, amen, that's true. <clears throat> An alpha and omega. It's the alpha and omega. That is the principle in which the Lord is going to exalt here the most. Because this is what allowed us to come, come, come to seeing all these things now. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun, from the east, and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. And he does not repeat anything that is of no great consequence. So he repeats these things because every eye shall see that Christ is Lord right here at Midway. Verse 13, I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor, nor, for, nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. So Cyrus's work was to let the captives go. And Cyrus is a symbol of Christ who comes here and gives right counsel unto the LPC here and they're freed and just as we said only Christ can wrench the slave from the oppressor and it's being this free free from sins and he gives gives us these jewels it's the it's his word right so we see that um foundation foundation and laid foundation is laid here because that's what Cyrus Cyrus was commissioned to do so let's go to Ezra chapter 3 verse 10 and what the and when the builders laid the foundation of, foundation of the temple of the Lord they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites the sons of Asaph with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David king of Israel and they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel, towards his son. Because this is the birth. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and the chief of the fathers, who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid, laid before the eyes, wept, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. So now we have to keep in mind what the Lord showed us previously. This brings my mind back to 1 Kings 18. Um, even though the prophets of Baal saw that this is of God and the fire came down, they still, they still wanted, wanted to follow Baal. And she says, I think she's speaking about, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the Tekoite nobles. When they went to go rebuild um, Jerusalem as well, she's yes. She she says um, she says even though man cannot man cannot um, doubt that the work the work is of God, men still hold themselves aloft to the work of God. So this is what happened here with these with these. Um, with these priests and Levites, the chief of the fathers, they see the foundation is laid. They know that it is of God. The 70 years just not elapsed and, and, and probably what, what was not fulfilled to the exact letter. But they still held themselves aloft to the work of God. The the Amen. So they come up here and they're, and they're, and they're smitten because cause they come here and they, and they do not repent of their sins. It says, verse 12, But many of the priests and Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men, Ancient men are the first one that are smitten. This is Ezekiel 9. Yes. Um, that had seen, seen, seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice. Many shouted aloud for joy, so that, so that the people could not discern the noise, the noise of the shout of joy, the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. So, had this foundation being laid. And men's feet must be fixed on this foundation, but there will still be men that will not believe that this is of the Lord. And Isaiah 58, raise up the foundation of many generations. So, continuing on. CCH 273.2 and 3, just the bold portions. The liberality of the Jews and the construction of the tabernacle and the erection of the temple illustrates a spirit of benevolence which has not been equaled by Christians of any later date. Next bold. Next paragraph. The start of the paragraph. <clears throat> his people had small his people had, had small possessions and had no flattering prospect of adding to them. 
but an object was before them to build a tabernacle for God. So, actually, I'm continuing on. The Lord had spoken, and they must obey his voice. They withheld nothing. So when you come here, this is, this is to be our work. It does not matter what God says sacrifice, we must sacrifice. Because it says that, says that the Spirit has not been equaled by Christians of any later date, but it must be, um, it must be, it must be equaled and surpass it in, in this time. And, and, in the, and, and at CSL and at the final review, it must, it must equal and surpass it. So we have to give our all into the work because the work here, it will be a very hard work. You're going to have to deal with many people who have now just come out of bondage and who um, do not know many things of, of God. And you must teach them patiently and, and you must be long-suffering. Next paragraph, we'll see, speaking of, the, at the um, build, build of schools. Next, bold, ED 36.4. A structure of surpassing splendor, demanding for its construction the most costly material and the highest artistic skill was, was to be erected in the wilderness by a people, by a people just escaped from slavery. Amen. Yep. Amen. Because the Lord <clears throat> comes here and puts away all, all, all the, um, all the false, false rules of man. He has to re, rebuild the foundation. Rebuild the foundation. Because every time men come in, put in their own thoughts, Christ comes and cleans it. Come here again. The second trouble. Men put in their own thoughts. Christ comes at. At the end, and he cleans it. He does this all the way until the house is fully clean. All right. ED 37, paragraph 1, just as one sentence. What an industrial school was that in the wilderness, having for its instructors Christ and his angels? So, it's low time peace. What are we then to do? Teach, build schools. This is it's to bring men to Christ. This is the work in which we have to do. Um, 37, paragraph 3. Thus in labor and in giving, they were taught to cooperate with God and with one another. And they were to cooperate also in the preparation of the spiritual building, God's temple in the soul. So this is the reconstruction of the temple. It's the cleansing of the heart. It's this, because we know in we have this foot washing. So this is where, well now we'll be cleansed. Next paragraph. God can communicate with his people today and give them wisdom to do his will, even as he communicated with his people of old and gave them wisdom in building the tabernacle. In the construction of this building, he gave a representation of his power and majesty. His name is to be honored in, in the buildings that are erected for him today. Faithfulness, stability, and fitness are to be seen in every part. So this reconstruction is the reconstruction of man. So what happened his, um, historically in 1865 to 1877 it's shown you the work in which we must do in our soul and, 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 and for the lost sheep as well. It's for the church. So then went over some of this at the end of days, but he looked at um, Daniel 4. Now we're going to look at Daniel 5 with Daniel now at the end of days. Because if you read on the 1843 chart, it says Daniel will stand in his lot at the resurrection, end of days. So the so the end of days, right here, is this resurrection. It's this birth, the newness of life. Daniel 5, um, 29. Then commanded Belshazzar, and, and, they clothed, uh, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a pro proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. So now, this is Christ now giving you all these riches. He's, you're, 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 your character is now will, will now be clean and it's shown by by this next thing we'll see daniel chapter 1 verse 18 now at the end of the days it's midway go to verse 20 and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm so god's people will be established here michelle 
God's people will be established right here and and they'll be found ten times better. And the diet of Daniel, this is prophetically I'm speaking, is Isaiah 30. It's the bread of adversity and water of affliction. This is what we're going through here, this time period, this test. It's uh, adversity. And affliction. She has another quote where she states that troubles is what prepares prepares the soul for peace. Ah, uh, amen. <clears throat> so this affliction is to bring us to this peace. Amen. It's to bring you into repentance because there's there's no peace onto the wicked. And the reason why they don't have any peace is because they don't repent of their sins. Mm -hmm. Still have sins upon the books. It's just why they have no peace. SPM, page 4, paragraph 3. You are getting the coming of the Lord too far off. I saw the latter rain was coming as suddenly as the midnight cry and with ten times the power. So, the reparations which... I have it up here. I don't. The reparations which man is to receive, the spiritual is the... The latter rain. Amen. And it's to be used in reconstruction. And to helping man to turn from their sins. And as you help man to overcome, you overcome at the same time. Amen. Yes, it's the birth. It's the birth of the Hebrew nation. Okay. So, do I have it in here? Yuck, yes. All right. Let's go to Mount Sinai. Because Mount Sinai shows the second coming of Christ as well. In, the, in this latter rain being poured out. It's the 50th day. It's Pentecost. But before you can receive this Pentecost, there's a work for you to do. Exodus 19 verse 10. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And Moses said, went down from the mount onto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And, and he said unto the people, be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And, they, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that, that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So before you come to Mount Sinai to, this, to Pentecost, this latter rain being poured out, what must you do? Amen. Repent. Be cleansed. Wash. Amen. They, they, they had to, um, there were 10 days. Amen. And I'm saying this is what we have to do right now from the prediction until this point. Amen. This whole, this period is this test because she says trials, trials prepare the soul for peace. So you have to <clears throat> bear the trial. All right. Page of Prophets, 303, paragraph 5, the underlying portion. During these intervening days, all were to occupy the time in solemn preparation to appear before God. So we say midway to second coming. So this is what we have to do literally right now. Their person and their clothing must be freed from impurity. The clothing is the character. And as Moses should point out their sins, they were to devote, devote themselves to humiliation, fasting, and prayer, that their hearts might be cleansed from impurity. So who's um, from iniquity? So who's Moses here then? Amen. Moses here. Amen. Is Isaiah 58. He's lifting up his voice like a trumpet. He's showing his people their what? Their sins. And then the people were to what? Cleanse themselves from their sins. Because that's what she says here. Moses should point out their sins. So Moses is a type of Christ. Christ will send light and then must point out our sins. But even in this camp, we are to be as watchmen, watching each other. Because Satan, as we know, is resisting every effort we make. Satan does not want us to come up to this point um, in the right, right state before God. So um, there's, there's a nice thing. She has this writing on how to receive reproof. And I believe we should read that because this is a this is where we are. Moses has to point out some of these sins. But and she also 
tells us how to point out sins as well. There's a, there's a particular way to point out sins and there's a particular way to receive reproof. Continuing on, 6 MR 23, paragraph 2. Um, Kennard read this, this prayer meeting or last prayer meeting, I believe. Yes. It says, if we would work as Christ worked, we must have the mind of Christ. He cannot cooperate with those whose lives reveal variance, strife, and bitterness. So this is what we must put out. Because if we have this in our midst, Christ, Christ will not help us. Val. Those who cherish these attributes are not susceptible to the influence of the Holy Spirit. The divine comforter strives with them, but they close the door of their hearts to his gracious pleadings, desiring to be left alone in their foolish, selfish perversity. They find a satisfaction, a kind of rest without pardon, without wearing Christ's yoke and learning his meekness and lowliness. But let adversity come and they find that they are leaning on a broken reed. These mistakes and delusions are to be corrected. A most solemn work full of responsibility and accountability, accountability is to be done. There is no peace save God to the wicked. Difference and dissension will be seen among those who are not chosen by the Lord. So if we have difference and dissension, we, we, this is telling us that we're not chosen of the Lord. So our work must be to cleanse it, put it away. Amen. Ah, amen. Yes, that's nice. But let it not spring up and bear fruit among those who profess to be representing Christ. There is no work more sacred for Christians than to maintain peace among themselves. Every single soul in here have to keep this in mind. You must maintain peace. And the peace is only in truth. Then they present to the world the unity that Christ prayed might exist. Because this is what we have to do here at Midway. This is how his church is established. And bear witness that God sent Christ into the world to redeem the world. Because there's an undercurrent going on in which we, we don't fully see. Mm -hmm. Amen. But if you if you die with your sins being blotted out, all is well, because you're only sleeping. Amen. It says it was at the last Passover that the disciples were to hold with their Lord that these words are spoken. Very soon, Christ was to offer Himself as a sacrifice for the world. At this time, in the last hours that that the disciples would have with their Master. Satan made a determined effort to arouse contention among them. So there's an undercurrent going on in which we do not realize. Satan really wants to bring about strife and contention within our midst. We must fight against it. The only way we can fight against it is with it is written. This is, this is why it is important that we come here and wash ourselves. Satan wants to come here and cause strife. It says, arouse contention. That's what I read. Oh, but later on it says, strife. So I'll put it now. Strife and contention. We must watch ourselves very closely. Because we do not want to be the agent of Satan to cause this strife and contention. Because it says, woe unto them that cause... Um, yeah, mark them that cause division. Amen. Thank you. So, we, we don't want to be in that class because there's a fearful woe that will be upon us and we must wash ourselves. Amen. Amen. So, it is because we know that this is Passover here. And before that time, it's what Satan tried to do. This is where we are now from the predictions. We have to keep that in mind. <clears throat> Um, sorrow filled Christ's heart as he saw them yielding to the spirit of strife and disputing as, as to who should be greatest. It's only pride that is causing these things. Had they been, been in, the, in a right frame of mind, they would have received great blessing. So there's great blessing for us to receive now. We must be in that right frame to receive this great blessing. 
But they came to the supper with their hearts filled with selfishness and with tempers heated by contention. And Luke 22 says here that, says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. That's what Satan's doing now. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When you come up to Midway, when you're, when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. To go and build, build these schools, go and lay this foundation, all these things. Go and seek and save that which is lost. Youth Instructor, December 20th, 1894, um, paragraph 2. <clears throat> Bold. Unseen intelligences survey the whole array of evil, and help is at hand. We shall not only be provided with that which is necessary, but shall be placed upon vantage ground. Let us be more hopeful. Let us encourage one another in the most holy faith. It is as essential that Christ should touch our heart now by his Holy Spirit as that he should redeem our souls by his most precious life. To every Christian comes, comes the word that was addressed to Peter. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. <clears throat> Thank God that we, are not, that, that we are not left alone. This is our safety. But we read in the first quote, the only safety for the soul at this time is to inquire to every step, what saith the Lord to his servant? So, amen. Our safety is, it is written. It's what God has said. Um, <clears throat> safety can never touch with eternal, eternal disaster one whom Christ has prepared for temptation by his previous intercession. For grace is provided in Christ for every soul, and a way of escape has been made, so that no one need fall under the power of the enemy. So, this is our work here. Christ, oh, all right, let me continue on. 1T268, we have this, um, she says, we have this war, famine, all these things. And she says, as these things surrounded God's people, they began to press the cat pressed together and cast aside the little difficulties. Self-dignity no longer controlled them. Deep humility took its place. So now, and um, reason resumes the throne. Then she, has, then she speaks about the little time of peace. So now let's look back at the Reconstruction Era. Because we looked at the Reconstruction Era with what God, God is doing here, but Satan is doing a work here as well. So, it says, Reconstruction, 1865 to 1877, the turbulent era following the Civil War was the effort to reintegrate southern states from the con Confederacy. It's a union. Ah, uh, that's nice. Go ahead. Verse 6, when the Samaritans came, they tried to unite. Unite. And God's people have to shun that Kick them people. out. Yes. So there will be, there'll be ones that, that, that want to reintegrate here, but you can't let them. This happened in the church, but now we're going to look at what's happening in the world. But what, what, what happened in the world in the Reconstruction era is telling us what's going to happen in this time period, in the, in the church and the world, actually. Hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. So now we'll look at what happened in the Reconstruction era. <clears throat> Society. So we have a union, League of Nations, the union after the Re Reconstruction era. So there's this union that is a theme in God's word. Amen, yes. And Adam is reunited with, with mankind. Amen, yes. When he, when he stands king again. And th that's what Christ wants to make us. So society means the union of a number of rational beings or a number of persons united either for a permanent, temporary or permanent purpose. Um, any number of persons associated for a particular purpose, whether incorporated by law or only united by articles of agreement, company, partnership, fellowship. So let's go look at a union, the secret society that came about during the Reconstruction Era. It's the KKK. It was, it happened um, December 24th, 1865. So we know it's at the end of the Reconstruction, um, end of the Civil War, beginning of the Reconstruction Era. So we have the secret, it's a new manifestation of satanic power that, I won't go, go into that part as of now, but they come up here, but you see their ugly head reared up greatly at the midnight cry. It's going to come back up. Their principles have not changed. The principles of the South, Satan's principles don't change, and we'll see it. So we have this secret society. 
So we saw what the Lord wants to do for his people. But we, we're gonna have to, we also have to see Satan's devices. Because when we see it, we can guard against them. Because there's an undercurrent taking place in the church and in the world. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Amen. So, reading. In Pulaski, Tennessee, a group of Confederate veterans convenes to form a secret society that they christened the Ku Klux Klan. The KKK rapidly grew from a secret social fraternity to a parliamentary no, paramilitary, excuse me, force bent on reversing the federal government's progressive reconstruction era activities. Is there? Oh, it's not there? Oh, I, I didn't add it to the notes. Sorry. Okay, yes, yes. All right. Yeah, I didn't have that part in there. So this this just saying when it, when it began in 1865 and shown us a secret society, there's this union here and we have to see what... Where it's tending, it's 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 all for the Sunday law. It's happening from now. Amen. Yes, yeah, Satan's gonna come. Is is God's word is so vast. That's all. All I'm gonna say. It's very nice. But after 1867, an increasing number of Southern whites turned to violence in response to the revolutionary changes of radical Reconstruction. The KKK and other white supremacist organizations targeted local Republican leaders white and black, and other African-Americans who challenge white authority. Okay, now let's go read what uh, I think it's A.T. Jones, one of the pioneers says. What the KKK once were to the South, the white caps are now now to the Central and Eastern, Eastern states with this difference, that while the former regulated politics, the latter have constituted themselves to the, the conservators of morals in the neighborhoods where they exist. Any person who in the estimation of the white caps is not a desirable member of, of society is likely to receive written notice to leave the country. And if the notice is disregarded, the individual, male or female, is taken to the woods and whipped most brutally. Several deaths have resulted from their brutality and whole communities have been terrorized. So in the Reconstruction era, you have this power being raised up. It's the KKK and the white caps. Or as you, I'll say, the white caps came later, but but the principles of the KKK and the white caps are the same. It's the same principles. Keep that in mind. Their 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 leader is Satan. <clears throat> in one place, next paragraph, the white caps have declared themselves the what? Messengers of God, to punish a violation of His law. In this respect, they have shown themselves to be ardent and consistent. What? National reformers. Do we know anything of the national reformers? The national reformers, basically, they are the Sunday movement. They are the ones that want to put in this um, Christian amendment. If you look up online Christian amendment, you'll see all that they have done. Just look it up on Google. You'll see it. The national reformers, they are the, um, the ones pushing for the Sunday movement. They are Protestants. So the, amen. It's just the north and the south. Yeah, amen. In a different name. But the principles are the very same. So the KKK and the White Caps, their principles are the same as national reformers. Because the KKK went and killed those who rose up against white, white government. White Caps did the same thing against the white government. It, but, but A.T. Jones here, I believe, that's who wrote it, sh sh tells us that their principles are the same as national reformers. Amen. It's mild. That's when you hear the dragon voice. They came and they said, yeah, let us join you. Mm -hmm. When they refused, then they went to the king. Amen. And then they, they, they got the, the decree from Smyrdas, the power. Amen. To go the stop the work. It's so the work of the enemies. Yeah, Amen. Subtle, and then when you, when you resist them, then you kind of start seeing their true colors. Amen. So the KKK and white caps. Historically, their principles are just the same as the, 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 Protestant, the Protestant world, basically. They want the Sunday movement. So I'm just put label them as Protestants based upon their principles, as we just read. Okay. Continue on where it says national reformers. And in that and in every other respect, they show themselves to be a most dangerous class. Um... If it has come to this, that that the laws 
that the laws of the several states cannot afford adequate protection to the community at large and that such and that such protection excuse me and that such protection must be had at the hands of a lawless and irresponsible secret order then truly are they falling upon evil times the society the secret society is a most dangerous one and its high moral professions only make it more to be feared okay um Okay, I'm coming down to, to a close. Yes, I'm coming down to a close. Only got a, a little bit left. I'll go over time probably five minutes. Just bear with me. Going to the bold from Review and Herald. As you know, we'll re yes, we'll re read the bold of this first paragraph. We must show to the world that we recognize in the events that are now taking place in connection with the national reform movement, the fulfillment of prophecy. So she took her own rule. She took the things that was happening around her and compared it with the predictions of God's word. Next paragraph. Prophecy re represents pro Protestantism as having lamb-like horns, but speaking like a dragon. Already we are beginning to hear the voice of the dragon. There is a satanic force propelling the Sunday movement, but it is concealed. It's this undercurrent. It's hidden. Next bold. Um... There is the prospect before us of waging a continuous war at the risk of imprisonment, of losing property and even life itself to defend the law of God, which is being made void by the laws of men. So she connects the national reform movement to the to the to the Protestants. So we, we see clearly that the national reform movement or when you look it up online, it's National Reform Association. They they are the Protestants that's pushing for a Christian amendment to the Constitution. Now let's go look it up. That's where I found online Wikipedia, I believe. It says the National Reform Association was founded in 1864 by representatives from 11 Christian churches in the United States. So it happened. This came about during the Civil War. Amen. Before, before the Reconstruction era came, this National Reform Movement came up during the Civil War. The Civil War ended 1865. But 1864, this comes up. So the civil war that's happening now in our time, there must be, there, there is happening right now, but we, I don't know it, but I, I do know based upon principle that there's Protestants working to bring about this Christian amendment to change the constitution. They're, they're, Satan, is, Satan has his men, men here trying to bring about this Sunday law. It is happening. It happened in the civil war then. We're saying now it's happening in the civil war. We're in a civil war, so it's happening now says it sought to and it says it sought to past tense and continues to advocate for the following christian amendment to be introduced to the u.s constitution it says okay this is this is the amendment in which they want it says we the people would acknowledge almighty god as the source of all authority and power in civil government the lord jesus christ as the ruler among nations his his revealed will as a supreme law of the land in order to constitute a Christian government. This is what they want to change the constitution to. And it is true that Christ is the supreme ruler. It is true that Christ Christ to rule in the nation and in the church. But they also they but they're leaving out that Christ gives every man their own free will to worship him. But they 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 want to come here and force people. And this it, it this national reform movement started in 864 in Pennsylvania in Allen Gee or something something like that. Yeah. Yes, it happened in, it, in Pennsylvania. Next paragraph. This movement soon gained, gained the support of several churches. For example, the Wesleyan Methodist Church in its 1869 disciple, I'm guessing it's a paper or a magazine or something, disciple contained a section of national reform, which, which continues to be retained by its successor, the Allegheny Wesleyan Methodist Connection in its most recent 2014 discipline that contains the following statement so from 2014 satan has been putting in the minds of protestants the these principles this is what he's trying to push it and it's happening now we're saying this we're in a civil war it happened in the civil war then it's happening now amen and all all the protestants are going to vote for trump they're pushing for this republican party because the republican party wants to bring the church in so now we have to see these things in our day. It's an undercurrent that is happening. So now this is what they say in their, in their paper or whatever, magazine or whatever it is, article. <clears throat> in 
it shall be the duty of the ministers and the members of the Wesleyan Methodist Connection to use their influence in every feasible manner in favor of a more complete recognition of the authority of Almighty God in the secular and civil relations, both of society and of, and of government, and the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ as King of Nations as well of, as, well as King of Saints. Their words do not change. They wrote in 1896, 1864, come down to 2014, they're saying the same thing. So we know 2014 lies up to Sunday Law, and this is exactly what it is. This is the, 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 this is the type, point to forward to Sunday Law. It says, as such, next paragraph, it says it says on the Republican horn, because that's the last horn that has to fall. As such that, amen, Wesleyan Methodist Church advocates for Bible reading in public schools, ch chaplain, chaplain, Seas in the armed forces and in Congress, Sunday blue laws reflecting historic Methodist belief in Sunday Sabbatarianism and amendments that advance the recognition of God. Continuing on, the National Reform Association desired for reverence for the Sunday Sabbath. So we know they, they have put the same things again in 2014. So this current is happening now. So, so, and I truly believe this is why there, there's the contention between the North and the South. It's hidden though, but it Everything that is happening is according to God's word. Oh God. The South doesn't want God, but the North wants God. But they're both satanic agencies because one, 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 one is the God of, God of tradition, but we are to uphold the God of the Bible. So, amen, yes. Um, if you look up online, I don't have any here. They, they've tried, they tried this. They went to... The presidents and so forth, numerous times. They've tried from about 17 times. And in the 40s and the 50s, they, they were prominent because they wanted to put down communism. And they understood communism was atheism. So they've been fighting all along. If you look up online, it was 18, it was 18 um, 70s, 80s, 90s, year after year. They tried to, they spoke with Abraham Lincoln, tried to get Abraham Lincoln to do it. They tried to get other presidents as well after to get it done but so we have the protestants it's the secret society but we know in the time of christ the pharisees and the sadducees united go to da 583 538 paragraph 3 just a bold pharisees and sadducees were more nearly united than ever before divided hitherto they became one in their opposition to christ so we have the protestants and now you have um the Jews, who are typifying the Seventh-day Adventists, you have the nominal Adventists now coming in, into this secret society, to go and take down God's people. And we see, see here, SPM 1.5, nominal church, nominal Adventists coming together. <clears throat> 1T 577.2 um, says, That night I dreamed that I was in Battle Creek looking out from the side glass at the door and saw a company marching up to the house two and two. They looked stern and determined. I knew them well. So they were Adventists as well, just Sister White. Next bold. The scene was changed. The company now presented the appearance of a Catholic procession. Nominal churches, nominal Adventists. There, there's, the secret society is a priestly plotting. The secret society is Adventists plotting against the little praying company. Plotting against Christ. It says they have spoken against our holy order, our secret order. Let's go back to the Civil War. <clears throat> in February 1863, during the American Civil War, a coalition of 11, 11 Protestant den denominations from seven northern states gathered to discuss the state of the nation, seeing the Civil War as God's punishment for the omission of God from the Constitution. So they, they took the Civil War as a punishment from God because they would not acknowledge God in the government. It's, they're they're, they're going to be saying the same thing towards God's people. These plagues and judgments are coming because you're not keeping the Sunday Sabbath. Amen. Yes. All the, the COVID-19, because our work is to go, go against, against the, the, the foolish vaccine they, they'll put forth. And they'll say, this is happening because y'all Adventists here are not, are not taking this vaccine. All these troubles are happening here because you're rising up against the government. But, Amen. They will say you were this troubler of Israel. Um, seeing the Civil War as God's punishment for the admission of God, 
of God from the Constitution. They, they discuss a proposed amendment to alter the wording of the preamble to acknowledge God, the preamble of the Constitution. The idea that civil governments derive their legitimacy from God and Jesus in particular was alleged to be based on biblical passages such as Psalms 2 and Romans 13. <clears throat> and Trump already quoted Romans 13 one time in his presidency. So we know it's going to happen again. So rest I got. Yeah, all of this is from Wikipedia. Yes. So. Um, the next next portions show how they want to change the Constitution. I'm not saying that this is exactly how 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 it would be done in the Sunday law, but but you see the principles of it. That's what I'm, that's what I want to bring forth. So the unlined portion is the insertions in which which the Wesleyan um, Methodist Connection Church put in here. And the and the crossed out portions are what they delete from the Constitution it says we, we the people of the United States recognizing the being and attributes of almighty God, the divine authority of the Holy Scriptures, the law of God as the permanent paramount, excuse me, rule and Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior and Lord of all in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure tranquility. And they take out provide for the common defense. Um, and, and they leave in the general welfare and, and, and us and secure the blessing of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States. And continue on <clears throat> the next two paragraphs show it again, that this is what they want to do to the constitution. So coming down to last quotes, um, Reviewing Herald, January 1st, 1889, paragraph 7. Those who shall seek to compel men to observe an institution of the papacy and trample upon God's authority are doing a work similar to that that one, that one, of the scribes and Pharisees, scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees in the days of the apostles. Next bold. The national reform movement that, that the world and the church have linked hands to bring about will manifest the same oppression, hardiness, arrogance, and intoler intolerance which have prevailed in past ages. So <clears throat> this national reform movement have been, have been working from 2014. And the head of that movement told all their ministers and laymen basically the goal that we are to use, they are to use all of their powers to bring about this Christian amendment. So we, we may not see it now, but it's happening right now. Satan is trying to resist and he, he's fighting this undercurrent happening at this very time. And it's, and it's permeating everything. We see it because when you go to back to 1864, when the 1865, right? <clears throat> you have this movement going on in the church. Mm -hmm. But then here comes the KKK. Mm -hmm. The KKK went down, here comes Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. When Jim Crow went down, here comes the civil rights era. Amen. Just the civil rights era is done. We're here. When you when 2014 came, who came up? Proud Boys. Yeah. Minnesota, all those. Yeah. Black Lives Matter. Matter. All the what things. Yeah. Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. This is only happening <coughs> in the church. Amen. And this is the point. You must see what because if you don't go in depth into God's word like this, you would not see the relation between everything that's happening in the world <coughs> and everything that's happening in the church. Amen. <coughs> Mm -hmm. the same spirit. spirit amen so i i'm glad i hope that we all see these things and it's there's really a, a atheistic spirit that's working and it's it's working satan is working trying to divide us trying to divide the movement trying to divide the government he doesn't want anything that 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 resembles god and if you resemble god in the slightest way he's going to try to stamp it out and destroy it and the only way she we we read a quote here is that if you once you hold on to Christ, Satan can't do anything to you because he has already lost. So this time, this causing this strife, sh this strife here is what Satan is really trying to do in every in on every stage. And we must resist that. It says resist the devil, and he will what? What Cestius do? He fled. So Cestius is symbolic of Satan fleeing right here at this point. Because, amen. Yes, the government is going to stop resisting, and 
Hey Amen. That's the only way you, you, you fight against uh, the, the papacy on the national level. Keep God's law, the Constitution, and, and God's people to keep God's law, the Sabbath. So since 2014, it's, it's been happening. And at the prediction, now where we are, there, there must be something happening uh, in a religious way of trying to bring about this Sunday law. Because if you look it up online, they tried so many times and they, they won't stop. The Jesuits, they, they, they don't change. The Southern Spirit doesn't change. The papacy doesn't change. And it's all Satan. He doesn't change. He's going to fight and fight for every inch. But we must resist him. But let's close off in a word of prayer. <clears throat> kind and merciful Father in heaven. <clears throat> Father, we ask that we may forgive us for our sins. <clears throat> Excuse me. Help us, help us to see, see ourselves in the right light. Help us to cast ourselves at, at your feet, O oh Lord. Help us to overcome our sins. Because Satan is really trying to hinder us from um, seeing light, light in your light, from, from having your law on, on each heart here, O oh Lord. Please, Father, help us. Help us to be of one mind and of one faith. Help us to hold on, hold on firm on 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 t t t t to your word O oh lord so that satan might not um have have his way have his way with us O oh lord you said that you said that you you alone can 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 wrench 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 the 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 slave sl slave from 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 his from his hand, oh Lord. So so Lord, we plead and ask that you may help us to work 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 in line with you, oh Lord, so that so that we might be brought back onto you, Father. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. We pray, Amen. <clears throat>